Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If this is your first time here, I'm so happy to have you join me. And if you've been here before, welcome back. One of my favorite things to do is to take things that I have a lot of that normally get recycled or thrown away and to see if I can make something interesting out of them. So I recently finished up several videos on using plastic bags for crafting. I've also done quite a few videos recently uh, using aluminum cans. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I recently went to my first craft show. And for most of the items that I sold at the craft show, they were made from tin cans. But it's been a while since I've done anything with glass. And so today I'm breaking out my microwave kiln and I'm gonna recycle some bottle glass. Before I get started, I do wanna mention that I have a beginner fusing glass video that covers some of the safety precautions, a little bit of terminology, and a few basic things that I've learned about using a microwave kiln. And I will put the link to that video in the description box, but please check that out just for some basic glass fusing information. So I'm definitely not a, an expert when it comes to cutting glass, but I do have a couple of tools. I have a bottle cutter that I have used a couple of times. I am terrible at bottle cutting, so if you would like tips on that, you probably want to check somebody else's video out. But you also are going to want a scoring tool. And then these are the tool that I use the most. They are just uh, wheeled glass or tile cutters. And you can get them uh, fairly inexpensively, under $20. So I use these more than anything and for the bottle glass because the scoring tool is much easier to use on a flat sheet of glass. And this is my setup here. I just kind of have the rusty old pan to catch my shards. And uh, you want to use all the safety precautions, protect your hands and your eyes when you're using this cutting tool. This is the microwave kiln and mine is made by Fuseworks, but there are other brands and I've seen kilns on Amazon for less than $50. So it's pretty inexpensive to get started. And they're very simple to use. They're just two pieces. This is the base piece and your working surface. Uh, and then the top piece, this area is the part that really heats up. So you definitely want to be sure to use your heat resistant gloves when you're working with the kiln. And then the other thing you're going to need is some fusing or kiln paper. And if you enjoy this type of content and want more upcycling ideas, please be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to manage your notifications so you're notified when I upload new videos. This is my collection of glass over here then. Most of it is wine and other liquor glasses. I was able to, lucky to find some red uh, glasses at the thrift store. But you can see here that with my cutting tool, I try to cut sort of small square pieces. Sometimes you get little triangular shapes, but you can see that there's nothing really tremendously uniform about the pieces that I'm cutting. But I do, when you're just beginning, it's easier to work with smaller pieces just because of the curve of the bottle glass. It can be difficult to stack all of the pieces. So I've got my fusing paper here and I've just pre-cut a square. Your paper needs to fit nicely on this inside circle of your kiln so it doesn't overlap um, or hang over the edge but it only has to be big enough for the glass that you're fusing so you don't have to cover the whole surface and for this project it's a little bit like Jenga because I'm just going to be placing my glass pieces in a circle and kind of then stacking a second layer on them so that I'm filling in some of the gaps that I'm creating. Some people use different adhesives. I have never really tried it much. It might make things go smoother. Um, these pieces are pretty small so the curve from the bottle isn't too horrible anymore. Sometimes when you're trying to stack the glass bottle pieces you end up with too many curves, you know, the bottles are curved, so it's really hard to stack them. So in that case, some glue might help. Um, I've read that you just need to make sure the glue's dry. You don't want any moisture in the kiln when you're fusing. And uh, I've seen people use, I think, super glue, but I, like I said, I've never tried it. So 
This is a little bit like a box of chocolates. You kind of never know what you're going to get. But that's part of the fun. And the great thing about it is if you do fuse something and you just think it's really unattractive or your pieces slip, you can try again because you can just refuse glass over and over, which is one of the great things about working with it. So I'm just placing these in a circle. Oops, that one's too big. Actually, it could work great for the top though. I've got mostly square pieces here, but some of my pieces are a little triangular shape and that helps fill in some of the gaps a little better too. You will find that the fusing sort of softens some of your sharp edges, but also you can still be left with some pretty pointed edges. So when I'm making these circles, I do try to make sure that I'm keeping the inside edge really smooth because it's harder to sand down. So if I end up with kind of a pointed little burr on the outside edge, that's much easier to take care of. So if I have a choice, I'm definitely going to make the inside edge smooth and the outside edge. If I have to, I can leave a little bit more of a pointed edge. You can place these with your fingers, but when you start getting the really intricate <laughs> or a lot of pieces, it's much easier if you have some tweezers. And even then you can knock it over like the Jenga game. Hopefully you can see this, but I'm just kind of laying these top layers over the seams kind of in the in the bottom layer so that I'm making sure that I'm got enough glass sort of hopefully a roughly even amount of glass in two layers all the way around and my inside edge looks pretty smooth I might have a tiny corner sticking out here you want to be careful about moving things around though because they will fall over so I've got two layers of glass now and I'm going to carefully set this in my microwave so I've got my piece in the microwave and nothing seems to have shifted. So I've got it in the center. I'm going to put my lid on or my top of my kiln on very carefully. And then I usually start with about two minutes. So we'll check it and see how the fusing is in two minutes. All right, so it's been two minutes. I'm going to carefully lift the, I guess I want you to be able to see this, but you want to lift the lid straight up when you're checking it. It just helps hold the heat or let the heat out more evenly. Now you can see here hopefully that all of the glass still has a pretty solid shape to it and we're not even close to being uh, fused. So I'm gonna give it another minute. You definitely wanna make sure you're using your heat resistant gloves for these when you're touching the kiln after you've heated it. Now again, I'm not expecting it to be done because most of my things take between somewhere a little over three minutes, but you do wanna check it here and there. And hopefully you can see that the one side is definitely uh, pretty much fused and the other side still has some of the little square shapes to it. So I'm going to go another 30 seconds and check it again. And hopefully you can still see in that back area there must be a thicker glass or heavier glass because it still needs a little more fusing. And you're just going to kind of have to estimate and see how you feel about some of this. Sometimes I'll go as little as 15 seconds at a time. I think I'm going to do another 30 seconds on this though. And that looks good. So I'm going to just take it out of the microwave and let it cool down for about an hour. Here's what the piece looks like after it comes out of the microwave kiln. And hopefully you can see there are definitely some little points on the outside edge. It looks like the inside is pretty smooth, which is good. And then the back side of the fused piece has a little bit of texture and it's, you know, flat from sitting on the base. And it picks up a little bit of texture from the fuse, fusing paper, at least the fusing paper that I'm using. But you can see that the top is nice and curved and round and smooth. So, like I said, you do get kind of random shapes. They're not perfectly shaped, like if you put them in a mold. But I think they're sort of, you can get some fun and sort of interesting designs, even though they're not perfectly formed. So to knock down the burrs on my piece here, I just have a sharpening stone. 
So you can knock down the burrs pretty quickly. You're not going to get a completely smooth shape, but you can get the pointed edges knocked down pretty quickly with this sharpening stone. So here's another shape that I built the same way. So you can see, obviously, that you do get some very different, uh, I mean, they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. And once you've got your shapes made, you can go ahead and add some cord for a necklace to make them into a pendant. And then I also think this shape is perfect for a glass uh, holder to hold your glasses around your neck. If you work with a kiln for a while, and probably especially in the beginning, you are going to have some pieces that you're not that happy with. And I have failures all the time. But I wanted to show you these two pieces because they are similar. This one's obviously a little too large, but they are little mosaic pieces that I made with a square piece of clear glass from an old picture frame and then I layered on some colored square pieces just in a mosaic pattern. Now the difference between these two is that I tried to do a softer fuse on this piece so you can see that the colored glass is sitting on top of my layer of clear glass and there's a little bit more of a texture, a bubbled texture to it. It's nice and smooth, but it does hold the color a little bit better. This one I did all the way down to a full fuse and you can see that it's very smooth on the top. It looks like the color is just um, swimming in the layer of clear glass and it definitely faded the colors. So. This one's definitely going back to the drawing board. I th think this one turned out pretty cute though. So I did want to just mention that when you are working with the kiln, you can kind of see whether your piece is fusing evenly and if you still have a little bit of definition to all of your shapes and you want to do this softer fuse technique, you can stop the fusing process a little sooner. So I wanted to quickly show you two other designs that you can make in this small kiln. This first one is a triangle shape and it's made by cutting the three side pieces of glass and then stacking some small pieces of glass on all of the corners. You can also make uh, round pendants. These are sort of small ones, but you just stack two squares uh, on top of each other and you offset the corners. And then in this case, I added a little pop of contrasting color. They usually end up pretty round. These two ended up fairly round. The colored uh, pop isn't all that exciting, but uh, sometimes you end up with sort of odd shapes. So this one's definitely going back to the drawing board, but you probably will end up with some pieces that you don't like, which is why I like using the free bottle glass for my projects. I hope you feel inspired and empowered to try some simple glass fusing projects for yourself. And if you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button to help my channel grow. Also, be sure to check the description box for more glass fusing tutorials, or if glass fusing isn't for you, you can check the playlist below for more ideas on how to make your own inexpensive upcycled jewelry. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.